Alright, so this video may not be appropriate for kids, and it is, uh, it's disturbing on several different levels, especially if you're a man. So you know on Smarter Every Day I try to keep everything very intelligent and respectful. But this video is crazy. Like, you need to think about whether or not you want to watch this, because now that I know this happens, I have nightmares. And they're not good. They're not good nightmares, okay? <laughs> so you just think about whether or not you want to know this information. Do you want to know it? Okay. Introduction. T talk to me. There it is. Give an introduction right now. Give hey, it's me, Dustin. Welcome to Smarter Every Day. I'm in the Amazon rainforest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so speaking of the penis tree, what this guy does to you? Yeah. It's the pretty much the third most venomous spider in the world. So nutrient nera. I'm gonna stay this far away. <laughs> They're really aggressive. Should we see how aggressive they are? Alright, most likely we're just gonna hop down. What? Let's see if we can get him to rear up. Oh, oh, oh no, God. he's like that. Holy cow, he's fast. So he's gonna put <laughs> it out in their face then. <laughs> no, you go ahead. Yeah. It also causes a condition called a priapism in males. Oh, priapism, no. oh yeah, ice water yeah. enema to fix that. Yeah. What is oh, it? Man. Okay, this spider is called the Brazilian wandering spider. And if you heard what Phil said, he said it causes this condition in males. I assume that means not in females. And there's only a couple things I can think of that can happen to a male but not to a female. Anyway, we'll come back to that. If you look, look underneath that front leg, you see how it's got banding, black, white, and black? Yeah. You see that from this angle? See that? Yes. Front leg, so when it gets really mad, it flips those up in the air, and then you can see that black, white, black, white. That's kind of a warning signal. Yeah. It's called so. a wandering spider? Yeah. Because he doesn't make uh, webs? Correct. All right, well, I'm done with the third most venomous spider in the world. Is she done with you? That's the question. <laughs> That's the question. Okay, you're on a jungle walk, an entomologist tells you that this spider can affect your penis. Obviously, first thing you do is you get the books out. Find out priapism is a medical emergency involving the penis, which is terrifying. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to this hospital. We're going to go find a urologist. We're going to ask him, what are the causes of priapism? And number two, and more importantly, what are the fixes for priapism? So we're going to go in here. I, I know it's funny, ha, 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 Destin's talking about a penis, but think about it. If you're a male, or you know a male, you need to know this information. So, if I have to take the hit, I'll do it. I'll try not to blush. But if he's a urologist, chances are he's either really funny or really boring. So, I don't know. Let's go get smarter every day. Whew, missed the door. Dr. Sergey Ananyev, am I saying that right? That's right. And Sorry. you are a, uh, let me get this, urologist, which is a... Glorified pecker check. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so show me what we're doing here. What is going on with the erection? Well, erection is a uh, byproduct of both nerves and uh, blood vessels working together once a man gets excited. Our penises consist of two chambers that have one-way valves. Those two chambers are called cavernosal bodies and they communicate to each other. R they communicate each other like hydraulically? As in, yeah, sideways, yeah, like R with fenestrations. Oh, really? Is it priapism or priapism? It's priapism, and priapism by definition is a prolonged erection that is unwanted that usually lasts four hours or longer. Okay, so what does that have to do with a spider in the rainforest? That's why I'm here talking to you. The spider in the rainforest, once it gets hold of you, yeah. is able to stimulate and affect a certain pathway which on the molecular level affects nitric oxide. You'll have this nitric oxide released, which is a molecule, right. that would in turn stimulate another molecule that will then relax the muscles inside the penis. So the nitric oxide is what activates whatever this is. It's a step in the ladder, yeah, to eventually relax the muscle of the penis to allow the blood flow in. Okay, so it's a valve. Uh, well, yeah, nitric oxide is just a molecule that helps open the door for a valve. But yeah, you, you, what you'll actually do is you have there in a way one-way valves where the blood flow goes in once a man is excited for whatever reason. Yeah. Yeah, whether a partner or a spider. <laughs> okay. And once the blood flow goes in, the one-way valves will close and the blood can't come out. You just made me think about something really strange. So, I'm an engineer. Right. And when I was in school, we had to do this equation in something called differential equations. Mm -hmm. And it was inflow and outflow. 
And so the rate of inflow versus the rate of outflow determine the internal fluid right. inside. So there is a differential equation. You can express it like mathematically to determine the rate of which that will do what it does. Okay, there's math on the screen. I'm starting to get a little bit more comfortable now. So the design of the penis is pretty interesting. It's like two balloons that are stacked side by side and you have an input and an output into the system. If you throttle these flow rates, you can generate this expanding control volume and that's the erection. Now, Dr. Ananyev will install these prosthetic devices into men who suffer from ED. It happens to men of all ages, by the way. So he decided to demonstrate how this biomechanical system works in the body by just showing us one of these devices. So this prosthesis that you, this is what you do, right? You insert these into the human body, right? It's one of the many things we do. These are the caverns, right? These are the two cavernosal bodies. When one gets excited, there's an increase in blood flow to both of those bodies. And I will demonstrate it by the virtue of this mechanical pump. So you've got a, like a hydraulic pump and you're squeezing it. That's right. So you're pumping that there and that's taking fluid from there. From the reservoir, which would be your bloodstream to the end organ, which would be the two cavernosal bodies in the penis. Okay, so that's being how... Being a one-way valve, it keeps the blood from outflowing. Gotcha. So once that happens, then, uh, you know, sexual activity happens and after... Oh, uncomfortable, Destiny. <laughs> I am a little uncomfortable. You, you actually deal with uncomfortable situations all day long, every day, right. don't that's you? That's my defense mechanism, yeah. That's fantastic. So the outflow, is this... You have it in the same valve here. So how does it happen in the human body? In the human body, when a man reaches a climax, certain chemicals are released that are allowing those valves to open. In the case of priapism, what will happen, Destin, is that you will have an increased blood flow, <clears throat> but instead of climaxing and allowing those one-way valves to open and allow the blood flow uh, back out, the blood stays in for a prolonged amount of time, as I mentioned, about four hours or longer. When that happens, the blood inside the cavernosal bodies becomes what we call ischemic, which means deprived of oxygen. And as it becomes deprived of oxygen and clots, it becomes very thick that in turn makes the problem worse because it's a lot harder for now the thick blood to get out even if the valves were working. So what do you do? Like there what do you... There are a couple of ways to fix the problem. Yeah? You would start off by trying to take a cold shower. I'll see if I can get some more tape, man, to Mr. Skelton. Does it cause permanent damage? Like people can... If I mean, you do not it... reverse it within about uh, four hours, uh, it can usually lead to irreversible uh, scarring and permanent loss of erection. Can you die? Uh, you would usually, I have not in my limited experience seen anybody die of priapism, but you can definitely suffer. So if the cold shower and then the medications do not work, the next step of the process is to actually drain the engorged blood inside the penis with a needle. With a needle? That's right. So, so you, you showed me the two caverns. There's a cavern on each side. So you have to do you have to drain them independently? No, you do not. Those caverns communicate, so they have a if so there is one good thing about this, yeah, usually you'll be able to uh <laughs> drain it from one side with the other side spontaneously, uh deflates? Yep. Is that the term? That would be the term. How big is that needle? It's can big, you, it's can big you? it's big enough to hurt. A lot of times you would talk to the patient about numbing up the area, but by that time you have to stick them twice and they're fairly uncomfortable. So what you end up having to do is go at approximately mid-shaft and stick the needle all the way inside their cavernosal body and then drain what would have the consistency of tomato paste by that time. Really? Or grape jelly. Does, oh my goodness. You would have to do this multiple times. A lot of times if the blood is really clotted, you will end up having to actually remove the clot and then inject sterile salt water in there and then irrigate it back out. Once you irrigate it out, it can come back within five to ten minutes. And you would actually repeat the process and for the poor folks in whom the condition keeps returning, you have to go to more drastic measures. Like? Like going up in size and instead of a needle using a scalpel, most of the time they would require sedation or sometimes trip to the emergency room you would actually have to drive the scalpel through the head of the penis. Are you serious? And ream it 90 are, degrees. Are you being serious right now? Yeah, unfortunately. Really? Mm -hmm. And so then that fluid would come out that, that open? It, it would actually create what we call a shunt. <clears throat> 
by virtue of a big size, <laughs> that, Man, that shunt will allow. The I'm having trouble to breathing right now. <laughs> this is bad. Yeah. So at that point, how do you? That's why I hate spiders. <laughs> good, good gracious. Oh man, there's really nothing more to say, is there? No. So actually in the head. That's right. Or is it called the penis. glands? It's called the glands, right? Yes, that's the proper name, glands penis. Glands. So does it, obviously there's damage, there's permanent damage because of that. There can't, but there's definitely going to be permanent damage without it. Last thing, how often do you see this problem? Obviously not from spider bites, but... Well, it depends on the community in which you're in, but we'll probably see it two, three times a year. So it's it's pretty rare. It's fairly rare, and you would usually be able to identify one by the risk factors, whether it's a predisposing disease like a sickle cell or overdose and medications that help you get to a happy place to begin with. Oh, I see. Well, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate yeah. it. Yep. Take it easy. Yep. Okay, in summary, I hope you don't feel like I was being rude or crude or disrespectful at any point in this. This is a serious issue, and I hope I got the information into your brain in a pretty interesting and fun way. Speaking of serious, I'm still not working on Fridays for pay. I'm furloughed, so that's a pretty big deal as a dad. So I'm more than happy to tell you about my sponsor, audible.com slash smarter. Audible.com, they have audiobooks, and you can go to audible.com slash smarter and get a free one. They want me to tell you about a book you can listen to that has something to do with the video, but I don't think we want to hear the word direction one more time if we can avoid it. So, I'm going to do you one better. Love. There's a book by C.S. Lewis, and actually read by C.S. Lewis on Audible, called The Four Loves. There's one word in English, love. In Greek, there's four. There's eros, there's agape, philia, and storge. Eros is erotic love, think about the video. But these other three are very interesting, particularly storge. I didn't know about it. So once I understood the four loves, my interaction with people in my life changed. It was very interesting, and I think it's good for you to at least explore that. Anyway, audible.com slash smarter. You get a free audio book. You're smart. You know what's up here. I'm Destin. You get smarter every day. Have a good one. Okay, so how long does it take? I mean, how long would this last? Several years in, in a man? That depends on the wear and tear. <laughs> You're, you're, not you're awful. <laughs> no, no, I got it. I can't. I can't do this. <laughs> this is a tree that grows in the rainforest, and it has odd-shaped things on it. The end.